Yeah, that's exactly right, Manny. This is actually the first time in uh, documented history we have three concurrent hurricanes. There's Kirk, there's Leslie, and there's Milton. Those are no impact to us. Those are out in the Atlantic, but pretty remarkable stuff for how late in the season we are. Generally, you would think you'd see that in September or August not October. Here's the latest cone. Let me go through it slowly with you. By two o'clock tomorrow, we've got a category three. So right now we're talking cat one. By two o'clock tomorrow, it's a cat three, sustained winds 125. Then we start the turn to the northeast. It's probably about Monday night or Tuesday we start to see when it comes towards Florida. And this turn, when it stops moving due east and goes northeast, will be crucial and where the center goes when it makes landfall. By two o'clock Tuesday, 145 sustained gusts to 175. I still think this will probably go higher. I still think we may see category five status for a period of time Tuesday. Then from there, this is very deceiving. This is like Katrina. If you're aware of how Katrina happened, Katrina was a five in the Gulf. I don't want you to take away from this. It's going from a four or five all the way to a three, oh, I'm okay. This is going to be a unique storm, or as it goes down in category nearing landfall, still major, the winds will expand greatly away from the center, increasing the amount of people who feel hurricane impact. So don't think as it's going from a four to a three, suddenly that means things are a lot better. Two o'clock Wednesday, category three, then from there crossing the peninsula. So we're looking at least as of this advisory, uh, the center or the eye going from about Sarasota to Lakewood Ranch and then exiting somewhere uh, over the Kennedy Space Center early Thursday morning. But again, the cone tells you where the center may go, not the extent of the impacts. Here's the spaghetti models with the cone and notice there's a tight clustering at least as of the latest edition for the sensor to go either over I-4 or paralleling I-4. Now again, there's a lot of implications here. Does the center go north of Tampa? If it does, we're talking about uh, potentially a generational storm surge not seen since the 1921 hurricane in Tampa Bay, double or more uh, of what Helene did. If the eye goes just south, that surge probably is not felt in Tampa. They'll have wind blowing from east to west. Then the surge goes down towards Sarasota and Fort Myers. So in terms of the surge on the coast, the track is key. And then also for the inland impacts, north of the track, massive rain, 10 inches, 15 inches of rain are possible in some spots. South of it is where there'll be the risk for tornadoes. Uh, and right along it is where the winds will be strongest before and after the eye. So there's the uh, latest with the spaghetti modeling. Let me show you the GFS versus the Euro. So you've got a couple of days to still get prepared. I would have your hurricane preparations complete by Tuesday afternoon. I want you to see though, there's still a lot of spread between the GFS and the Euro. Here's Wednesday afternoon. Notice the GFS takes the eye to Ocala, Florida. That is within the cone. It is possible. It is a far northern outlier. The European model brings the eye right over Tampa Bay, paralleling I-4, uh, then exiting the Space Coast early in the morning on Thursday. Let me walk you through our exclusive Fox model so you get the idea. So tomorrow, we've got showers and some thunder like today. Now that's gonna add a unique element to this forecast. We've had a very wet period in Florida the last several weeks and months. More rain Monday and Tuesday ahead of the hurricane means that the threat for wind damage and tree damage is a lot higher. The ground is very saturated and it's gonna get more saturated well out ahead of the hurricane uh, as we go forward. So there's Monday night. There you see category four, possibly briefly. Category five, now Tuesday, you can finish your hurricane preps uh, Tuesday in the morning, but notice now we see that turn to the northeast and this will be key. Where does the eye come in? Is it closer to Fort Myers? Is it over Tampa? Is it just north of Tampa? Regardless, it'll move northeast, but now we get into that period of worse weather, which is late Wednesday, heading into Thursday with potentially prolonged hurricane impacts uh, across central Florida. All right, so I wanna bring in now uh, Michael Brennan from the National Hurricane Center who's joining us. And I, uh, I, I presume you heard some of what I was saying there, and I'd love to get your thoughts on this. So first, uh, what would you say to people who are, are on the coast uh, when they should start maybe thinking about evacuating? I know we don't have any uh, watches yet. When would you say we maybe start getting some watches being issued? 
Well, we're likely to issue storm surge and hurricane watches for portions of the Florida West Coast probably by tomorrow morning, maybe around the 5 a.m. advisory package. It seems likely there'll be evacuation orders uh, posted by some of the local officials in some of those counties along the West Coast tomorrow. So that's when people are going to want to start to move. Uh, and again, like you said, you're going to want to be in your safe place by the time you get to late Tuesday. Those impacts are going to be coming overnight Tuesday into Wednesday morning. Now, Michael, I don't know if you heard what I was saying before, but I was trying to tell people that even though the category is forecast to come down going into landfall, that means that the radius of the winds extending further from the center, I don't know if you would like to speak to that a little bit for those of us more inland in the Orlando area. Yeah, you know, and it's also a couple of factors here that are going to play in in Orlando. It's not just the, the size of the storm, but the forward speed is going to carry those hurricane force winds and that threat in, to, through the interior, perhaps through the I-4 corridor and all the way to the east coast. Uh, but again, you don't want to pay much attention to the category. That's just the peak wind in a very small location. As storms weaken, sometimes they get bigger, and we're expecting Milton to grow in size. And so we're going to see a substantial threat of uh, tropical storm force winds. You look at our tropical storm force wind speed probability, they cover much of the Florida Peninsula as a substantial risk of sustained tropical storm force winds. Could see hurricane conditions, especially in gusts uh, near where the center of Milton goes across the peninsula. So it's going to be a very impactful storm regardless of the category. Yeah, Michael, one thing I wanted to ask you about here, uh, our, our TV station here, we cover central Florida and up to Gainesville. But for our friends and uh, viewers on the East Coast, uh, places that were hit really hard from Ian and Nicole a few years ago, yep. uh, Volusia County by Daytona Beach, Flagler County. I know the storm is pulling away, so it's not a true surge as it gets off the East Coast. But could you speak a little bit to some of our viewers who might be on the beach in the Space Coast or up to uh, Daytona about the potential big wave action or anything uh, as the storm's pulling away on Thursday. Yeah, because Milton is going to sort of be transitioning from a hurricane to sort of more of a wintertime low, the wind field is going to get pretty intense on the west side. So we're expecting to see some pretty substantial winds blowing near to or, or even onshore portions of the Florida East Coast. There is a risk of storm surge inundation. It's still, you know, three to four days out, so it's difficult to hone in on the details. But I would expect to eventually see hurricane watches and maybe even storm surge watches posted for, for portions of your viewing area from, you know, Brevard County up through the Daytona area. Uh, and again, substantial inland impacts, and let's not forget the heavy rainfall threat that's already starting to play out. That could really be centered along that I-4 corridor region. Michael Brennan, we know you're very busy, and uh, we really appreciate you taking a few minutes with here again, uh, Michael Brennan from the National Hurricane Center. Manny, I'll send things Thanks. back over to you.